Hi everyone, my name is Jan Qureshi, a second year medical student, and um, today I'll be covering external genitalia. Um, here are my contact details if you'd like to ask any questions or um, need any tips or help. Um, so let's start. Um, these slides are from Dr. Artif, by the way, so I've adapted them with his permission. And um, before I begin, does anyone know what this position is called? Um, considering I, maybe no one's joined yet, I'll just go on and tell you. It's the lithotomy position. So it's pretty much um, like this image shows. And I'm hoping that they showed you this in lab as well. So anyways, this is how we're getting these um, angles of um, these sections and images. So from this position, we can see, uh, firstly, the perineum area. I know we're covering genitalia, but uh, I need to cover the basics of perineum. Hopefully you guys do uh, have a bit of a grasp of that from the previous lectures. Just a quick overview here. So. Um, we have the urogenital triangle, um, more anterior, and the anal triangle. And together that makes um, this perineum area. And obviously the difference between male and female is that you'll have the vagina there as well for the females. Um, you have to know these boundaries as well, anteriorly, uh, posteriorly, laterally, the roof and the floor. And I won't spend much longer on that. Now, regarding the perineum again, you have to know these borders and boundaries and um, content because they will come into play for this lecture and the difference as well between uh, we have to know between the male and female is obviously you have the vagina along with the compressor urethra muscle that's basically um, the sphincter urethra in the males you have this different name but it's the same thing and you have the sphincter urethra vag vaginalis which is basically another muscle which goes between both the urethra and also the vagina so it encompasses both of them Okay, and obviously um, the rest is the same pretty much other than just change the word penis into clitoris for the uh, veins and arteries. Okay, now the genitalia itself. So using the perineum as a foundation, you build upon that. And so let's start off with the males. Um, you have a superficial transverse perineal muscle here. So it's superficial and it's going transversely, okay? And that's going towards the perineal body. The perineal body, again, like the perineum lecture, it's going to be this structure, this like pillar to help support and attach all of um, these muscles and ligaments, et cetera. So it's coming across there. And then you have the um, ischiocavinous muscle and the bulbosponginous muscle. So let's see these. Um, yeah, so here you have, they're making up uh, where is it? Sorry, here you go. So the corpus cavernosum here, that's coming from um, both sides. And you have the corpus spongiosum. And then you have the bulb of the penis here. And you have the crust of the penis. So those four things are basically making the erectile tissue. Okay. Um, and on the other hand, for the females, you have a similar thing. You also have the corpus. Oh, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. My bad. Um, so you have, again, the corpus cavernosum, corpus spongiosum, bulb, and crust. That's going to make up the erectile tissues of the penis. And um, other than that, we have um, the deep box fascia of the penis. Okay. That's over here. Right. And then that's going to be on top of all of this. And then on top of that, we're going to have the dartos. Okay. Well, by the skin. And uh, the tip of the penis is called the glans penis. So the female version is going to be the glans clitoris, um, which hopefully you guys have done in embryology. They're coming from the same place. Okay, so now to the female one. So as I was mentioning, you have the glans clitoris, like the glans penis, okay? And you have the corpus cavernosum, uh, like you can see here as well. And you have the crust of the clitoris rather than the penis. Again, it's making, it's a similar thing over here, okay? And then the bulb or the vestibule, like the bulb of the penis again. Okay, so try and make those links so you can better remember them all together. And so, yeah, these are also erectile tissues as well. So you have four here for the males and uh, four for the females. Okay. A difference, though, is that you don't have a corpus spongiosum. Okay. Corpus spongiosum is um, going to contain the urethra. But as we know, the vagina is it's separate thing. It's it's only for uh, sexual intercourse, whereas um, the penis, it's gonna hold um, it's gonna uh, hold the corpus spongiosum because it wants to hold the urethra, 
as well as it's going to transport um, semen. So it's going to do semen as well as urine. Uh, whereas in the females, it's separate, and therefore there's not going to be a corpus spongiosum there. All right. Um, yeah, and hopefully the rest of these muscles make sense to you from the previous lectures. Um, what we have to know clinically for this is that you have the Bartholin gland. Uh, here they are. So pretty much the Bartholin uh, gland, it's like a similar thing to um, the bubble urethral gland in um, males. However, the difference is the Bartholin is superficial, okay? The bubble urethral is deep uh, and the Bartholin is superficial. It's in the superficial perineal pouch, okay? Whereas the bubble is in the deep perineal pouch. So the associated clinical significance is that this can get occluded or infected. So if it gets blocked, if the vestibular gland gets blocked, okay, then that can cause an infection later on. I'm sorry, without an infection, it can cause um, an accumulation of mucin, and that's mucin, sorry, and that's just going to swell up, and you can see this over here, okay. Whereas so the infection, it can cause an abscess to the side, okay. So hopefully that makes sense. If there are any questions, then do just stop me at any time. Okay. Now with the cross sections, Dr. Arthur focused mainly on the penis uh, rather than the clitoris. So here's what he labeled here, pretty much from the outside to inside. We'll start with um, the skin, okay? And then followed by the skin, you have uh, dartos. And then between dartos and uh, buck's fascia, so dartos is superficial and buck's is deep, so that makes sense. Between those two, you'll have the superficial dorsal vein, okay? I know everything else is gonna lie in, is gonna lie within the buck's fascia. That's gonna be think of a neurovascular bundle. Okay, so you'll have a nerve. So you have a, a dorsal nerve of the penis, which is coming from pudendal. You'll have the artery. So you'll have the dorsal arteries of the penis, which is coming from internal pudendal. And you'll also have the deep cavernosal arteries. That's gonna be within the corpora cavernosa. Okay, and that's also gonna come from internal pudendal. All of these, not all of these, but mainly, mainly, I'm tripping on my words, mainly we're going to cover um, arteries from the internal pudendal. That's the main focus, which um, Dr. Arthur focused on, okay? So, again, dorsal nerves of the penis, dorsal arteries of the penis, dorsal vein of the penis, which is going to be uh, deep dorsal vein, because it's deep of the penis now. And then you're going to have um, the deep cavernosal arteries, which are going to be within the corporate cavernosa. Okay, and then you obviously have the corpus spongiosum with the urethra inside it. Uh, regarding clitoris, you also have corpus cavernosa, and that's all you said there. Um, now let's look at let's look at the actual external genitalia itself. So I'll start from anterior and work my way posteriorly. We have the mons pubis. Mons means um, like a hill or like a mound, so it's just like a, a layer of fat there for cushioning. Then you have the anterior um, anterior labial uh, commissure. Um, one tip I would say for anatomy is try and learn what terms mean. So um, commissure is like something which like is going to connect. And also what I do as well is I try and correlate them to other uh, blocks as well. So we have, uh, right now I'm doing neuro, you have anterior commissures there. So if you try and bring those links together, then it helps you remember them. Uh, so uh, that's going to be where obviously the lab it's connecting together. Um, Prepious of clitoris, it's like foreskin, okay? Then you have the glands clitoris itself. Okay, that's like a, people say it's like the remnant of the actual glands penis in females. Then you have the frenulum of clitoris. Again, you might've heard of frenulum before. You have it in the mouth as well, between the tongue and etc. cetera. Um, you have next, um, let's go with the labia minora. Okay, so minor meaning smaller and labia meaning lip. So that's the lip of um, the vigil. The labia is lip, okay. And it's a smaller one, okay. And you have the external urethral orifice there. And then you have the labia uh, majora, okay. So it's the bigger one on the outside, right? And then you have the vaginal orifice itself. So vaginal orifice for the vagina and urethral orifice for the urethra, okay. Then you have um, the greater vestibular glands, also known as bathroom glands. That's there to help lubricate this whole area. Um, the posterior label comments here so you have the anterior one now you're the posterior one that's it so that's just where it's going to meet and connect that's all then Rafi uh danis okay oh and um, by the way this is this whole area 
It's called the vestibule, right? Uh, you also have a vestibule in your ear, a vestibule in your mouth. Again, just trying to get those connections together. The meaning of vestibule is like this area of a building, the part which it's not, it's on, it's connecting the exterior to the interior, but it's not the building itself. Just like this is not technically the vagina, although everyone says it is, but the vagina is actually in there, it's deeper. So this is just a vestibule, okay? The vestibule of the vagina. Um, and here we go, that's the vestibule of the vagina now. So it's a space between the both labia minoras, okay? Um, and this is just a deeper version showing you the the bartholin glands on the below the dissection going on there. Okay, so you have the vestibular bulb, and that's going to lead you into the glands, which is going to have an opening. Where is opening? There it is there. And there's also going to be one on the other side, but it's fine. Uh, okay. Is that, is everyone following so far? Okay, good. Um, so now we come to the erectile tissues and muscles of the female. Uh, so the labia and skin have been removed. So we're trying to see the, the muscles themselves now, deeper down. And so what we have here is obviously the glands of clitoris. Then we have um, ischiocavernosis, okay, coming across. And uh, it's being cut over on this side. Um, here you have the crust of a clitoris. We said that's going to help with the, it's an, erectile, it's an erectile tissue, okay. And then you have the perineal membrane. It's on, it's actually, it's like you can call it like um, a border in a way. It's like, a, it's going to be separating between superficial and deep okay so this whole area is going to be superficial right um so a superficial perineal pouch um bobo spongiosis as well over here and then superficial transverse perineal so it's going transversely across and levator ani over here um with the three muscles which uh, make that up although that wasn't mentioned in this lecture so i'm going to avoid it because i'm not sure if you guys need to know that or not um yeah now this is just another image so you can just use this if you would like to to study, and this is the cross sec the transverse section. But um, again, don't focus on it too much because it wasn't it wasn't focused on in the lecture. Now, um, all you have to mainly focus on here is that these branches are all coming from internal pedendal. Okay, so you have the deep clitoral artery, dorsal clitoral artery, perineal artery, inferior rectal. Inferior rectal is going to go to the anus. Dorsal clitoral is going to go to clitoris, okay? That makes sense, but the main thing to focus on is internal pedendal, okay? That's it. Likewise for the veins, internal pedendal vein. That's pretty much it, okay? Um, this is just a quick overview for the scrotum. Uh, again, it wasn't focused on too much in the lecture. Just know the drainage, the lymph drainage, venous, the nerve supply, and the arterial supply, okay? And obviously that the dartos is going to be the one which is actually giving this Rugosity, so like the wrinkles in the scrotum is from the dartos. That's pretty much all that we need to know. And oh, sorry, and the gentle branches covering uh, the gentle femoral nerve, the gentle branch is supplying this area. Okay. Now, what are the contents of the scrotum? Actually, first let's start off with uh, from up here. So we have the scarpus layer, and then under the scarpus layer, we're going to have the external oblique, which is actually coming down, and it's going to start to form the external spermatic uh, fascia, okay? Then within all this, we have, uh, we'll have um, Dato's fascia, and then we'll have uh, the cremaster muscle. Uh, and then between the two scrotums, we have a septum to divide like a wall, okay? Uh, so between the scrotum, you have a septum, and then uh, that's gonna give you either side, the te testicle on either side. So the content itself, so again, the spermatic fascia, okay? It's covering it all. Uh, within we have the cremaster muscle, we have the septum of the scrotum, and now inside each uh, each side we'll have a testis, okay, and the epididymis on either side, and that's pretty much it. Um, this is just another view, and here you can see the, all the layers, okay. So we have to actually memorize these layers, um, just because these, these get tested a lot. So we have firstly the skin, followed by the dartos fascia, followed by external spermatic fascia, uh, fourthly chromasteric fascia, fifth internal spermatic fascia, and sixth tunica vaginalis, which um, has a parietal layer and a visceral layer. So there's a space in between, okay? Um, 
this was mentioned in previous lectures, this slide. So I will try and avoid it because I don't want to repeat too much. But again, here the you have the layers and testicular artery, pampiniform plexus over there and epididymis. Okay. And then obviously the lobules are the testes. Okay. Now the penis itself uh, is made up of two parts. Okay. The root, like a tree, is attached to the ground. So this is the part which attaches down. Okay. And you have the body itself. Okay. The root is made up of um, iscocavenosis muscles and the bulbous spongiosis muscle, like the part which attaches down. And then the body itself, here you can see the glands, the neck, bulbous spongiosis, spongiosum, and copper cavernosa. Sorry. And then, yeah, this is going to attach to the perineal membrane, remember? Okay. The structure itself of the penis is made up of um, three parts. So you have uh, two copper cavernosa, so one and two, okay? And then you have the copper spongiosum, so this over here, okay? The, the glass penis over there. And um, there are quite a few slides here just to show you the different um, angles of it. Uh, so you can better understand anatomy, but definitely check in the lab for models, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, support of the penis. This is an important uh, concept which gets tested a lot. Uh, so you have um, you have two ligaments we need to focus on. Firstly, the fundiform ligament, okay? And that comes from the lower part of the linear alba, okay? It splits from the linear alba into two and basically makes like a sling, okay? So it's holding up the penis like a sling, right? Sorry. And then um, suspensory ligament. So it is uh, deeper than the fundiform ligament, okay? And it's, sorry, here. And it's uh, triangular in shape. And um, so that's coming from the front of the pubic symphysis, okay? It's attached into there, and yeah. Now, this is just another uh, another few views. So you have the inferior view over here and the cross section over here. And I won't dwell on it too much. Here you have the corpus cavernosum, uh, both, both. And then you have the corpus spongiosum, the glands. You'll have um, the bulbous spongiosis muscle, and iscocavenosis over here, and the bubble of the penis over here, deep transverse perineal, perineal membrane, and that's where it's all attaching to, okay? Um, on this side, I think we don't have to focus on these actually. These are like a deeper veins and arteries, that should be fine, yeah. Okay, so again, this is just another view of it. Hopefully this all starts to make sense now. You have two things here, one, two corpus cavernosum right and left and then you have the corpus spongiosa uh more in the central okay and just one more view for you again just to do, study this in your own time if you like to and just better understand the anatomy here okay so this one we have to actually stop on um i think you guys might have done this in renal but um pretty much it's the pre it's, it's the urethra again okay we have to know these because um, they ask a bunch of questions on it. Um, so first we have the pre-prostatic, okay, from the urinary bladder, pre-prostatic before the prostate. Then we have the prosthetic, which is in between inside the prostate. And then we're going to have uh, the membranous area, which is like the weakest uh, part of the urethra, okay? Remember that? And then you'll have the rest of the urethra, okay, the sponge part, or the penile urethra, okay? Now... This question comes on quite a lot, like for us, for previous batches. So um, I don't want to generalize completely, but mostly you'll have like straddle injury questions and you'll have cystoscopy uh, questions. So straddle injury, like think of someone like trying to jump over a fence and then they land in the place you don't want to land on, right? And cystoscopy is like, you know, you're putting uh, the camera up and you're trying to see the bladder okay so the point of stopping on this slide is pretty much because a bunch of questions come on here regarding where um, the urethra might rupture and what can happen after that so you have this thing called extravasation extravasation ex extravasation okay and um, basically it could be superficial or deep so if it's superficial it's going to pretty much spill out the urine and possibly blood as well out into this entire area okay Whereas deep is going to be more towards it. So it's going to be pretty much um, 
uh, superior or behind the neogenital diaphragm. And the other one's going to be superficial. So it's going to be in front of or uh, anterior or uh, superficial, whichever is making more sense in your mind. But either way, uh, the point is that different injuries, depending on where it affects the urethra, is going to change where this urine or blood is going to be found. Okay. And so we'll come into this question later, I think, in the end of the lecture, uh, hopefully. But just remember this difference. Okay. And the anatomy as well, because sometimes they ask you, um, uh, what could be bounding the urine? You know, like what is it? This fascia or that fascia, etc. For example, the scapus fascia here, dato is over here, and uh, on this side you'll have the peritoneum. Okay, so just remember these things. Um, this uh slide was told uh in the lecture not to focus on. Um, pretty much all you have to know is that sometimes uh babies are born with the abnormality where the external urethral orifice is actually um, going to be more ventral, okay? Like it's, think of it, it's just, it's just emerging out too early, okay? And so that's pretty much it. Its name is hypospadias, okay? Um, here are the arterial supplies, deep dorsal arteries, dorsal arteries, arteries of the bulb, and superficial dorsal arteries, okay? So that's all you know about those two, I mean, those four. And um, the first three are from internal pedendal, okay? And the last one is superficial external. So I think mostly Dr. Atif will hopefully just focus on these three because uh, he's not trying to make it too complex on you guys. So inshallah, just focus on those three. Um, venous drainage, you have, again, superficial dorsal veins and deep dorsal veins of the penis, which we covered before. Regarding nerve supply, there it is, dorsal nerve of penis and iliaguinal nerve, okay? The motor is by pedendal, so like pedendal is pretty much, uh, it's really important for um, sexual intercourse. Like you don't have pedendal, you won't have any sexual intercourse, okay? So that's pretty much it. Autonomic innervation is going to come from uh, pelvic, inferior, gastric plexite. Don't focus on it too much. Um, just learn it yourself um, if you need to. Uh, then memorize it, but I honestly I don't think it's covered that much. Check physio for that. I don't think it's covered too much, honestly. But do know, sorry, do know that these are sympathetic, okay? Which is going to cause vasoconstriction, whilst parasympathetic is going to cause vasodilation. I think you guys covered that in lab. So it's going to be parasympathetic, which is going to actually allow direction, while sympathetic is going to cause ejaculation, okay? And then that's going to come from S2, S3, S4. So actually, my bad. Do do learn this one, okay? Um, yeah. Again, internal pedendal arteries and veins. You need to focus on those. Okay, that's pretty much it. Here is the rest of the image for you. Um, but don't focus on it too much. Internal pedendal artery and veins is where questions will hopefully and usually do come from. And yep, that's for women. Pretty much the same thing. Otherwise, just change the word clitoris to penis for the males. And, and yeah. A few questions here. Uh, so firstly, during an elective urology rotation, a medical student was asked by the urologist to name the structure that slings around the base of the penis and helps support it. So which of the following structures was the physician most likely referring to? Can anyone answer? Okay, so that would be the fundiform ligament of the penis. Uh, there you go. And so it is that thickening of the superficial fascia and uh, the suspensory ligament that descends down and yeah that's going to come from the linear alba okay so question two um, there was a car crash and uh, there was an MRI scan it revealed a rupture of the penile urethra and uh, deep box fascia so where is the urine most likely going to flow to so try and visualize the anatomy again um, could it be ischial anal fossa no, that's going to be more towards posterior side. Is it rectal vesical? No, that's too deep. Is it deeper in the pouch? Again, too deep. And retro pubic space? Again, the same. So I think we're left with E, superficial perineal pouch. That is the answer. And next question. Um, a first year resident is going to arrive to a uh, uh, urology department and is seeing patients. Which of the following is correct? So you have a few statements. Again, just take your time. Think about it.
Okay, so hopefully you got the answer. It was dorsal arch of the penis. And there's explanation. I'm sure that makes sense to you. Again, if you have any questions, do stop me. Okay, this seems straightforward. So you have this table here for you guys, and it's pretty much going to cover all the nerves. And there's no easy way to go about it. You do have to memorize all these. You have to know the nerves' names, their origin. The course is not as important to cover, but do read over it just to get a brief understanding. And finally, the distribution. That's really important. You have to know where each and every one is going to distribute. So I can't really explain this part. It's going to be sitting down and just revising and memorizing this table. And so honestly, just wish best of luck to you guys with that. Here is the one for the arteries. Not as many details. Again, know the arteries name, their origin and the distribution. The course is not as important. Now, again, the main thing to know is internal pedendal is a lot of these are actually going to be coming. See, they're going to be coming from the internal pedendal, the perineal and the rectal. Again, these are then coming from the perineal, which is coming from the internal pedendal. Okay. Um, but the course is not as important. Again, here, just try and learn where these are supplying to. Okay. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much it from my side, honestly. Um, do you guys have any questions? Because I've I've went through this and it seems like if you have any questions, do let me know so I can try to explain a bit more to you guys. Here is the survey for the quality and insurance. And um, again, if you have any questions, then do let me know to send this through. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much it from my side, honestly.